So many of you will recognize this. This is Norton Keynes. It's the only motorway services on the M6 toll motorway. And people use that simply because they don't want any queues. And what do they find when they get here with their EV? They find two grid surf chargers, 60 kilowatts, dual bay shared power. And there's a warning on the app already saying this is getting busy. I'm Dave, we're out and about having breakfast in the sunshine. It might surprise many people to realise that, look, this looks brand new. This is over 20 years old. This is back in the days of the electric highway when they'd have typically 30, 40 kilowatt dual base shared chargers. And what's changed? Well, very little, in fact. Apart from when GridServe took over, they upped those to 60 kilowatt dual bays. Now, in terms of GridServe, we're all familiar with them because if ever you go anywhere on the motorway, they've taken over the old electric highway contracts. And so they are the number one installer of chargers on motorway services. So you're going to see them everywhere and they're doing a fantastic job big uh, cash injection a couple of years ago, and that is showing in the number of charges being installed at the moment. And that runs through to here as well, because we got a whisper that something was happening here. And for a long time, the only motorway services on the M6 toll motorway, all they had was two grid serve uh, electric highway chargers, which is absolutely unacceptable these days. But it's really interesting to see that there's now something happening about that. So when we arrived for our breakfast, lovely breakfast by the way, uh, we did notice something uh, unusual going on over there which would indicate what charges are going to be installed. We need to go and have a look what's up there. So the picture they put up here might be a bit misleading because that looks like one of their classic chargers, the 350 kilowatt single bay ones. But when we look at what they're doing here with the spacing, we realize that they're going to be installing the 360 kilowatt dual bay computer controlled intelligent, intelligent chargers. There's just too much space between here and GridServe anyhow would normally install 12 chargers. So here we've got six bases going in, six dual bay chargers, that's 12 bays. And that will be a nice addition to this particular location. So starting from this installation at the bottom, we have two of the dual bay uh, grid serve 60 kilowatt chargers. One of them is a Chadamo. Uh, but right next to that, we've got two of the fast chargers. These are the 22 or 11 kilowatt chargers at about half the price. And that's where the new installation starts. So we've got the first of the bays, which is here, and we're showing uh, one charger there two posts to stop people mowing them down. There's another one there just behind the, uh, the banner. Uh, so that's the second one. And then we got three, four, five, and six. So we've got a total of six. And that would indicate now that they're using the, the new, the flagship model, the 360 kilowatt dual bay chargers. These are computer controlled, intelligent sharing of power between the cars. So the cars will only get what they need. Um, and the one thing that really stands out here is, well, can you spot it yourself? If we just swivel round, I'm not going to give you a clue, I'm going to tell you. If you go to somewhere like Lancaster or Exeter, you'll find that the grid serve chargers are right on the entrance. Every car coming into the services has to drive past the chargers, which means in busy times, if you're charging and want to get out, you now have to stop the whole of the motorway flow into the services for you to get out. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. You can see here cars trying to pull out, cars pulling into the motorway services. And this is a built-in traffic jam. It doesn't have to get very busy at all. And this can stop all of the traffic coming into this particular services. And exactly the same applies on the other side. It's a nightmare in Lancaster. It's a nightmare down in Exeter as well. Here, we're a long, long way from the, uh, from the motorway services. Uh, and that means two things. First of all, these are not going to get iced. Uh, iced motorists won't park here and walk all that way. 
it's not their style. So these are likely to be uh, vacant if they're not being used. Uh, and secondly, there's going to be absolutely no trouble getting in and out of these, which they do have on a lot of services. So this is a much better laid out uh, installation. We've got the substation has already gone in, uh, so everything is being kept away. It's just a lovely feel to the car park as well. When we come in, there's multiple routes to go into. So again, unlike Lancaster, where every single car comes in through the same uh, narrow entrance, here you just split up and go where you want. The car park is compartmentalized. So you just pick whichever area you want. So at this point, this all hands over to the DNO. That's the distribution network operator, the part of the national grid that provides power to customers who need it. So there's a substation there, but at this stage, there's very unlikely to be any connection into the grid. That's gonna come at a later date. How long does that take? Well, we saw on Bert Services, it's just taken years. I think we're coming up to the third year where we filmed there, and those chargers are not yet installed. Everything's ready for them, but they're not yet installed. Recently, we went to Sandbatch, same thing. The posts are in the ground, the holes are in the ground, everything's waiting, and I'm assuming at that point it's just waiting for the DNO so this one could be a, just a matter of months from now and it's up and running it could also be a couple of years that is one part of this expansion that really needs to improve we're always so impatient and every one of us who has an EV would desperately like this one to be up and running right now, maybe this week. Oh, I'll give them next week or the end of the month. But of course, this is all part of the drive towards the first stage of the mandate, which is 2030, when more and more of us will be driving EVs. And as long as this is finished in the next four years and two months, uh, it'll just slot into part of that. And we see this all over the place. Others are going in very much quicker than that. So there's a massive, massive growth in EV chargers heading up to the first of those um, step changes in the mandate. So I had a look at the app, a uh, big orange warning came up, this site is getting busy. At the time the warning came up, there were three cars plugged in there, none into the fast charger at all. So it's looking like they're regarding this as heading towards rather busy and needing more. But uh, as we get towards 2030, this sort of installation will come into its own. More and more of us will be stopping off and more and more of us will need to be able to get access to very fast charging very quickly. We do not want to sit and queue. Uh, one of my recent videos, I said the future is going to be measured not by the number of chargers that we actually find out on the road. That's a little bit irrelevant. What is going to be uh, determined by is whether an average family in their new EV can go somewhere on their holiday route and find charging without having to queue. The number of actual charges is rather irrelevant. It's that feature, the ability to pull into a motorway services and find charges that are vacant. So this is where we're heading. We're heading to locations where you're going to be able to find chargers whenever you need them. It's not guaranteeing there'll never be a queue. You can't guarantee that your post office, your local pub, or your local fast food restaurant. Occasionally you will get, um, you'll get a queue. But being sensible, this will provide all of the charging that we need. And this just follows on what we find as we travel throughout the whole of the country. Massive amount of infrastructure going in, huge. And even if they stop now, the backlog of stuff that hasn't yet been connected or hasn't yet been dug but has got planning permission will mean there's going to be growth for the foreseeable future. So I'm very, very confident that we're going to see a very different situation heading towards 2030, where charging is going to become much less of an issue. What will become an issue is grid server going to try and charge you 85 pence for charging here. That is an extortionate price for uh, people who are out on the road and have to charge somewhere. 85 pence per kilowatt hour. Now, bit of a tip for everyone who wants to charge at GridServe. If you use the app, it's totally free. You don't need to any credit card details or anything, but if you use the app, these prices come down to 79p. Still very expensive, 
but it's actually just a bit more tolerable. So anyone who uses GridServe, please, 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 if you're going to use GridServe, and I hope you wouldn't at 85p, but if you're going to, just make sure you get the app, download the app, and then you're going to benefit from that drop down to 79p. So that's it for now. We've got loads more filming to do today. So we're going to get back on our road, having eaten our breakfast, and see what we find at the next stop. So thanks for watching. I'm Dave.